in today's lecture we will learn how to solve second order linear homogeneous recurrence relations with constant coefficients. Now, as we have seen before that a second order linear homogeneous recurrence relation with constant coefficients will have the form a n plus c 1 a n minus 1 plus c 2 a n minus 2 equated to 0 where C 1 and C 2 are fixed real numbers. Let us name this equation as 1. Now, the solution technique consists of starting with a trial solution of the form a constant c times r raise to the power n and substituting this in 1 we get the constant times r raise to the power n plus c 1 into the constant times r raise to the power n minus 1 plus c 2 the constant times r raise to the power n minus 2 which is equal to 0. And in the first step we note that uh, a reasonable assumption is c not equal to 0. So, assume that c not equal to 0 to obtain r raise to the power n plus c 1 times r raise to the power n minus 1 plus c 2 times r raise to the power n minus 2 equal to 0 and we name this equation 2. We can further simplify this again with the assumption that r is not equal to 0 to get this r raise to the power n minus 2 equal to r square plus c 1 r plus c 2 into 1 equal to 0. Assuming r not equal to 0, we have r square plus c 1 r plus c 2 equal to 0. Let us call this equation number 3. The equation 3 is called the characteristic e equation of the recurrence relation 1.
usually when we are solving the recurrence relations of this type, we can directly write the characteristic equation and proceed ahead, but in this lecture each time we will start with the trial solution, obtain the characteristic equation and then solve the uh, characteristic equation to obtain the solutions of the recurrence relation. This way over and over again we will uh, get the practice of solving recurrence relations from, from the basic definitions. Now, the first observation that we have over here is that the recurrence relation uh, has been transformed to a to an algebraic equation. Thus, in a way the solution of 1 is transformed to the problem of solving 3, which is an algebraic equation and for which we have established methods of solution. Now, we start with an example. Now, as before we consider a n equal to c r to the power n and substituting in let us call this 4, we have c r to the power n minus 7 c r to the power n minus 1 plus 12 c r to the power n minus 2 equal to 0 that is r to the power n minus c uh, 7 r to the power n minus 1 plus 12 r to the power n minus 2 equal to 0 call it 5 that is r square minus 7 r plus 12 equal to 0 call it 6 and of course, here we are assuming that r is not equal to 0. So, our problem at hand is to solve the algebraic equation r square minus 7 r plus 12 equal to 0. r square minus 7 r plus 12 equal to 0. We factorize the left hand side uh, first we can write r square minus 3 r minus 4 r plus 12 equal to 0 that is r r minus 3 minus 4 r minus 3 equal to 0 that is r minus 3 
into r minus 4 equal to 0. Therefore, the solution is r equal to 3 or r equal to 4. Now, when we get two distinct real solutions of the characteristic equation of, of a recurrence relation, then we write the general solution in the form general solution of 4 is of the form a n equal to some constant k 1 times 3 to the power n plus another constant k 2 times 4 to the power n. Now, there is a theory dealing with linear recurrence relations, which tells us that if we get the roots of the characteristic equation and if the roots are distinct, then the general solution that is the general form of any solution will be of the form a constant times nth power of one root plus another constant times nth power of the other root. We cannot go into details of the theory right now, but we can accept that for the time being. In order to solve the recurrence relation, our uh, for a particular case, we have to do something more. Very often, a recurrence relation comes with the so called initial conditions. In this case, let us assume that we have an initial condition a 0 equal to 2 and a 1 equal to 5. That is, somebody tells me that uh, we have a discrete numeric function given by a n, where n varies from 0 to infinity and a n minus 7 a n minus 1 plus 12 a n minus 2 equal to 0 for all n greater than or equal to 2, which is the problem that we are solving right now. The initial conditions a 0 equal to 2 and a 1 equal to 5 has to be given along with the recurrence relation if we want a particular solution. Now, we take the general solution of the recurrence relation under consideration and then put the value n equal to 0. For n equal to 0, we have a 0 which is equal to 2 equal to k 1 plus k 2. Therefore, we know that k 2 is equal to 2 minus k 1. For n equal to 1, we have a 1 which is equal to 5 equal to 3 times k 1 plus 4 times k 2. We can always put the value of k 2 
in terms of k 1 and obtain 3 k 1 plus 2 minus k 1 which is equal to 3 k 1 plus 8 minus 4 k 1 which is equal to minus k 1 plus 8. Well, this is essentially k 1 equal to 8 minus 5 which means 3. Therefore, we have obtained the value of k 1 which is equal to 3 and k 2 equal to 2 minus k 1 and this gives me minus 1. Thus, the solution of the recurrence relation is a n equal to 3 times 3 to the power n minus 4 to the power n therefore, it is 3 to the power n plus 1 minus 4 to the power n. Next, we question that what happens in case we do not get two distinct real roots. Now, let us look at a at a recurrence relation of the form. a n minus 2 times a n minus 1 plus 2 times a n minus 2 equal to 0. This is example 2. Now, again we take a n equal to c times r to the power n to obtain the characteristic equation uh, first we get this one uh, c r to the power n minus 2 times c r to the power n minus 1 plus 2 times c r to the power n minus 2 equated to 0. So, we get c times r to the power n minus 2 equal to r square minus 2 times r plus 2 equal to 0, which leads us to the characteristic equation r square minus twice r plus 2 equal to 0. Now, we solve it. So, this means that r equal to 2 plus or minus 4 minus 8 divided by 2 which is equal to 2 2 plus minus minus of 4 into the square root sign and this is 2 plus or minus i times 2 divided by 2 which is 1 plus or minus i. Therefore, the general solution is 
a n equal to some c 1 times 1 plus i raised to the power n plus c 2 times 1 minus i raised to the power n. But at this point, we will process 1 plus i raised to the power n and 1 minus i raised to the power n. But we see that 1 plus i is equal to root 2 into 1 by root 2 plus i times 1 by root 2, which is equal to root 2 cos pi by 4 plus i times sin pi by 4 within parenthesis. Therefore, 1 plus i raised to the power n is root 2 raised to the power n and cos pi by 4 plus i sin pi by 4 raised to the power n and at this point we will use de Moivre's theorem to write 1 by root 2 uh, root 2 raised to the power n cos n pi by 4 plus i sin n pi by 4. Similarly, 1 plus minus i is root 2 1 by root 2 minus i 1 by root 2 which is equal to root 2 cos minus pi by 4 plus i sin minus pi by 4 and 1 minus i raised to the power n will be root 2 raised to the power n cos minus pi n by 4 plus i sin minus pi n by 4 which is equal to root 2 to the power n cos n pi by 4 minus i sin n pi by 4. Now, we will be replacing this and this expressions in in place of 1 plus i raised to the power n and 1 minus i raised to the power n. Let us go to the next page now. So, let us recall that we have an expression in the form a n equal to c 1 1 plus i raised to the power n plus c 2 1 minus i raised to the power n where we have worked out the expressions for 
1 plus i raised to the power n and 1 minus i raised to the power n which we substitute now to get c 1 2 to the power n times cos n pi by 4 plus i sin n pi by 4 plus c 2 cos n pi by 4 minus sin i sin n pi by 4 and we have to multiply by 2 to the power root 2 to the power n. Therefore, we get root 2 to the power n c 1 plus c 2 cos n pi by 4 plus root 2 to the power n i times c 1 minus c c 2 into sin n pi by 4. Now, suppose somebody tells us that there is there are initial conditions in the form a 0 equal to 1 and a 1 equal to 2. Then we will substitute these values in the general solution to obtain 1 equal to a 0 equal to c 1 plus c 2. We have to note here that if we look, look at the expression of a n root 2 to the power n if n is 0 is 1 the next factor is c 1 plus c 2 which survives and then cos 0 pi by 4 is cos 0 which is 1 plus again root 2 raised to the power n is 1 i into c 1 minus c 2 will be there, but sin 0 is 0. Therefore, the second term does not appear in this expression and therefore, we get that c 1 plus c 2 is equal to 1. Now, if I put n equal to 1 then we will get 2 equal to a 1 which is equal to root 2 into 1 because we already know that c 1 plus c 2 equal to 1 into cos pi by 4 plus again we have a root 2 then i times c 1 minus c 2 and sin pi by 4 which we know is root 2 in fact, let me write sin pi by 4 here, sin pi by 4. So, in the next step we write root 2 into 1 by root 2 plus root 2 into i c 1 minus c 2 by root 2. So, root 2 will cancel both expressions. So, I get 
i times c 1 minus c 2 is equal to 1 and please see here that we really do not need c 1 c 2 independently separately we just need i times c 1 minus c 2 and c 1 plus c 2 and both are ones. Therefore, we have a n equal to root 2 raise to the power n cos n pi by 4 plus root 2 raise to the power n sin n pi by 4. Thus, we see that ultimately the solution that we get after putting the uh, initial conditions is real. The discrete numeric function a n for all values of n will take real values although in between we got some intermediate solutions which are uh, complex numbers. Now, the natural question that occurs here is that given a uh, polynomial of degree 2 and equation whose degree is 2 that is a quadratic equation in single variable, we know that there are 3 possible cases. The it may have 2 distinct real solutions or 2 distinct complex solutions and there is a third case that is the case when the solutions are repeated or it is sometimes called the roots are repeated. Now, we will now look at that case in example 3. Consider the recurrence relation a n plus 2 minus 4 a n plus 1 plus 4 n equal to 0. Now, if we apply the same technique put a n equal to c times r to the power n, then we get here c times r to the power n plus 1 n plus 2 uh, let me write it properly. So, we get c times r to the power n plus 2 minus 4 into c times r to the power n plus 1 plus 4 into c times r to the power n which is equal to 0. Now, first we take out c to get an equation of the form r to the power n plus 2 minus 4 times r to the power n plus 1 plus 4 times r to the power n equal to 0. This is important therefore, uh, let us number the equations we again start from 1. So, on this page the recurrence relation will be referred to as the equation 1 and r to the power n plus 2 minus 4 r to the power n plus 1 plus 4 r to the power n will be referred to as equation 2 and then 
assuming that r is not equal to 0, we get r square minus 4 r plus 4 equal to 0. Let us call it 3, which is the characteristic equation of 1. It is obvious that 3 is same as r minus 2 square equal to 0. Therefore, we have only one root repeated twice which is r equal to 2. Therefore, we have one solution as a n equal to some constant times 2 to the power n. But at this point, it is very important the theory tells us that we have to get so called another linearly independent solution of the e equation 1. Now, roughly speaking, when we say we need another linearly independent solution, we mean that the discrete numeric function that we are talking about is not a constant multiple of the discrete numeric function that we have obtained here that is c times r to the power n, because all the constant multiples have been already taken into account. In fact, the theory says that the general solution of a second order linear homogeneous equation will be of the form of c 1 times one solution plus c 2 times another solution which is not a multiple of the first one. Now, from the characteristic equation we get no other solution that is why we consider the equation 2. Now, since equation 3 has a repeated root, we know that if we take the derivative of the left hand side of the equation 3, which is a quadratic polynomial, that repeated root will also be satisfied. Uh, that derivative will be also satisfied by that repeated root. Let us check that. So, let us write f r as r square minus 4 r plus 4. The derivative of f r that is f dash r is 2 times r minus 4. Now, f dash 2 is 2 into 2 minus 4 which is equal to 0. This is true in general. Now, we have equation 2 over here which is essentially uh, some g r equal to r to the power n into f r. Now, if we take the derivative of g r that is g dash r, this is by the chain rule the uh, sorry the product rule we get n into r to the power n minus 1 f r plus r to the power n f dash r. Now, if we put 2 instead of r, then we have n into 2 to the power n minus 1 into f 2 plus 2 to the power n into 
f dash 2. Now, we know that f, f 2 is 0, we have already proved that and we have already also seen that f dash 2 is equal to 0, therefore, this is equal to 0. Now, we, we take the derivative again of 2 in the form given as the left hand side of the equation 2. If we do that, then we get n plus 2 r to the power n plus 2 minus 1 minus 4 times n plus 1 r to the power n plus 4 into n r to the power n minus 1 is equal to 0 and I know that this is satisfied for r equal to 2. Now, since we know that r not equal to 0, I multiply by r both sides to get n plus 2 r n plus 2 minus 4 n plus 1 r to power n plus 1 plus 4 n r to the power n which is equal to 0. Now, here we observe a startling fact. We see that we have already proved that this equation is satisfied for r equal to 2. Therefore, we can safely write that this means n plus 2, 2 to the power n plus 2 minus 4 n plus 1, 2 to the power n plus 1 plus 4 n 2 to the power n equal to 0. That means, that if I had taken a n as n r to the power n as a discrete numeric function, that discrete numeric function will satisfy the linear recurrence relation given by 1. Let us match it, because we have here n plus 2, 2 to the power n plus 2, which is a n plus 2, if a n equal to n r to the power n. So, I have a n plus 2, then minus 4 a n plus 1 plus 4 a n equal to 0. So, by considering the fact that if a quadratic equation has repeated roots, then that repeated root is going to satisfy the equation obtained by taking the derivatives of the quadratic equation. And then by using that and the equation 2 over here, we have obtained a uh, another uh, solution for the original recurrence relation. Now, let us look at these two solutions. Let us recall again the recurrence relation that we are considering a n plus 2 minus 4 a n plus 1 plus 4 a n equal to 0 and the recurrence uh, uh, this is the recurrence relation and the solutions are a n equal to a constant times 2 to the power n 
another solution is a n equal to a constant times n 2 to the power n. Now, general solution will be of the form a n equal to some c 1 times 2 to the power n plus c 2 times n 2 to the power n. Now, initial conditions are uh, given by a 1 equal to 3 let us see and a 0 equal to let us take a 0 equal to 1. Then, if I put n equal to 0, then 1 equal to a 0 equal to c 1 and 2 to the power 0 is 1 and the second term is going to be 0 because n equal to 0. So, we get c 1 equal to 1 and if I put n equal to 1, then we get 3 equal to a 1 equal to c 1 is 1. So, 2 to the power 1 plus c 2 into 1 into 2 to the power 1. Therefore, we get 3 plus uh, uh, 3 equal to Three equal to two plus two times C two, which means C two equal to half. Thus, the solution is a n equal to two to the power n plus half of n 2 to the power n. Thus, in this lecture, we have discussed recurrence relation which are second order linear homogeneous with constant coefficients and we have seen that a general method of solution exists and it leads to solving quadratic equations and when we want to solve quadratic equations in one variable there are three cases to be considered one when the roots are distinct real, two roots are complex and three repeated roots. We have seen how to handle these three cases uh, in the context of second order linear homogeneous equations with constant coefficients. This is all for today. Thank you.